is at a historic junction. The freedom from fear and want, the freedom of information, and the freedom of expression appear to be under increasing attacks. Our time is not and will not be defined only by these attacks, but by our responses and our resistance. Established in 2014 by Columbia University President Lee C. Bollinger, global freedom of expression advances understanding of international norms that protect freedom of expression and the free flow of information. Our goal is to support and strengthen the efforts of the lawyers, activists, and judges who have overcome illegitimate restrictions, defied authoritarian regimes, sided with democratic principles, and fought intense battles in courtrooms using the law as a tool of defense. We recognize that these individuals and institutions often operate in the face of mounting violence against journalists, arbitrary imprisonment, government surveillance, and censorship. To celebrate their values, courage, and persistence, we have created the Columbia Global Freedom of Expression Prizes. They recognize judicial decisions and legal representation around the world that strengthen freedom of expression by promoting international legal norms. The prize is awarded in two categories, excellence in legal services and significant legal ruling, with special recognition to other organizations and courts who have showcased outstanding wisdom and courage in defense of freedom of expression. We honor fact-based activism and normative risk-taking. We celebrate resilience, conviction, and those who demand boldly, we demand boldly inquire courageously, who inquire courageously who want and claim dissent, and there is much to dissent against. Past prizes have recognized courageous courts and lawyers from all around the world. Their stories provide hope that as long as there are judges, lawyers, and activists committed to the defense of democratic values, we will have a strong bulwark protecting freedom of expression. And now, please welcome the president of Columbia University, Lee C. Bollinger. I would like to begin by thanking the members of the selection committee for bringing their judgment and their expertise to bear on the awarding of this year's Global Freedom of Expression Prizes. David Kay, Dario Millo, Karuna Nundi, and Dirk Verhoof. And I would, of course, especially like to thank Agnes Calamard and now Catalina Botero and all that they have done for Columbia Global Freedom of Expression. Thank you all for joining us for what I know will be a stimulating and enlightening tribute to the people and organizations that work so hard to strengthen freedom of expression by promoting international legal norms. We're living through a time when threats to global freedom of expression are mounting, when democratic principles are being eroded, and authoritarian governments are rising in number and in prominence. The second decade of this century has seen an uptick in the imprisonment of journalists and in violence against journalists and activists from state and non-state actors. Criminal and civil defamation measures are increasingly being used to silence speech alongside encroaching with internet surveillance by governments there have also been a disturbing rise in voices that seek to delegitimize journalism and the people who practice it. Fortunately, the global norms that courts with great difficulties began to build during the last decades of the 20th century are providing strong counterweights to these regressive trends. Regional and national courts are issuing innovative decisions that build upon existing international standards to uphold essential democratic principles. Columbia Global Freedom of Expression established these prizes in 2015 to recognize judicial decisions and legal services that strengthen international freedom of expression. Past prizes have recognized courts and lawyers from around the world, including those who have protected sources from government unmasking, 
found criminal defamation to be unconstitutional, lifted indiscriminate website bans, and given a voice to historically marginalized groups. This year, we received nominations from countries across Africa, the Americas, Asia, Europe, and the Middle East. It was a very hard task to choose the winners. And so we decided that, in addition to the two prizes, we would honor six nominees with a special recognition to acknowledge their hard work and excellence. As for our winners, the prize for significant legal ruling has been awarded to the Community Court of Justice of the Economic Community of West African States. The award recognizes the court's ruling that the Togolese Republic government violated the right to freedom of expression by shutting down inter the internet during protests in 2017. The Prize for Excellence in Legal Services has been awarded to the Foundation for Press Freedom and the Center for Justice and International Law for their legal assistance and advocacy on behalf of a Colombian journalist in her successful efforts to hold her government accountable for the sexual violence that she experienced. I offer my congratulations to the winners, my deepest thanks to the selection committee, and my admiration for all of the nominees. With that, we begin tonight's ceremony, which will include remarks from our distinguished winners. Thank you. As part of this year's ceremony, the committee would like to grant a special recognition to a series of nominations that have gone above and beyond in their defense of freedom of expression. First, for their work in removing obstacles in the fight against impunity for the death of Maltese journalist Daphne Caruana Galizia, we would like to give special recognition to the Daphne Caruana Galizia Foundation and its legal team and supporters, as well as the Supreme Court of Malta and Malta's first hall of the civil court for their decisions in legal rulings related to protests speaking out against the assassination of Ms. Caruana. We would also like to present special recognition to the regional human rights courts for their monumental decisions, which undoubtedly strengthen and advance the understanding of freedom of expression. Specifically, we would like to commend the Inter-American Court for Human Rights for their ruling in Bedoya Lima versus Colombia, for acknowledging the dangers that female journalists face and the obligations states must abide by to safeguard journalists, especially as related to gender-based violence. The European Court of Human Rights for their ruling in Dickinson versus Turkey for declaring that politicians must show greater tolerance towards criticism and satire and not threaten prosecution which creates a chilling effect on freedom of expression. And the African Court of Human and People's Rights for their ruling in XYZ versus Benin, for upholding that the right to access information is an essential requirement for effective public decision making. In 1991, the Community Court of Justice was established as the principal legal instrument of the Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS. The court has handed down pathbreaking decisions focusing on international human rights violations. The court ruled in a landmark decision that the state of Niger had not upheld its legal responsibility to protect Mani from slavery under international law. Hadijatu has been a victim of slavery, and the Niger government is responsible for this. This started a nationwide conversation about the taboo subject of human slavery. And in 2021, the court ordered the Nigerian government to refrain from prosecuting or imposing sanctions on Nigerians for the use of Twitter after the government instituted a countrywide ban of the platform. Since 2005, Cases brought by individuals alleging human rights violations have increased year after year. As a result of the court's work, more individuals are accessing the court. And at the same time, the court is undertaking efforts to become more accessible for individuals. 
the court aims to remain an independent, reliable, and accessible judicial institution by applying community legal texts and ensuring the protection of human rights. On behalf of the Selection Committee, it is my honor to present the Columbia Freedom of Expression Prize 2022 in the category of Significant Legal Ruling. This year, we have the distinct pleasure of presenting the award to the Community Court of Justice of the Economic Community of West African States, known as ECOWAS, for the ruling in the case of Amnesty International and ORS versus the Togolese Republic. In September 2017, the government of Togo instituted a countrywide internet shutdown and stated that it was a matter of national security. They did so in order to disrupt protests that advocated for the return of the state's uh, 1992 constitution that guaranteed multi-party election and a two-term limit for the head of state. ECOWAS had to determine whether this action by the Togolese government violated the right to freedom of expression and access to information as enshrined in Article 9 of the African Charter on Human and People's Rights. In June 2020, the Community Court issued a monumental decision that demonstrated both a sound legal reasoning and um, an advancement of our legal understanding regarding freedom of expression and access to internet. Unanimously, the court decided that the internet shutdowns in Togo did indeed violate the right to freedom of expression and directed the state to take all necessary measures to guarantee that this did not happen again in the future. In doing so, the court highlighted the importance of the modern day internet as a key tool for individuals to exercise their right to freedom of expression. In the 21st century, the internet is the world's main source of information and it is a critical forum for the dissemination of ideas. Governments around the world have begun to commonly use internet shutdowns in order to curtail digital freedoms and suppress dissent. The decision set a brave and essential example to foster a better climate for people to exercise their right to freedom of expression and their digital citizenship. It took a firm stand against regressive measures at a time in which access to information has become crucial. I would like to thank Honorable Justice Edward Asante, President of the Community Court of Justice of the Economic Community of West African States, for participating in this year's prizes and accepting the award on behalf of the court. Many congratulations once again. On the presentation of the Columbia University Global Freedom of Expression Award instituted by Lee C. Bollinger to the ECOWAS Court of Justice, I must say that I'm expressing my gratitude to the President, Lee C. Bollinger, and his prize committee that he chairs. I'm surprised by the decision to give the Global Award for significant legal ruling to the ECOWAS Court of Justice. We did not put in any self-nomination for this prestigious award. Hence, our suspicion that it was a human rights institution that is so on our behalf, recognizing our good works. And I must say that we are extremely grateful for that recognition. The court was initially set up as an interstate court to adjudicate on matters, disputes between member states and application of the treaties amongst them, among other restrictive mandates. In the year 2005, there was a supplementary protocol on the court that expanded its mandate and gave it a human rights mandate. There were four main mandates given to it as a community court, as an administrative court for ECOWAS staff, 
as a human rights court and as an arbitration tribunal. In the exercise of its human rights mandate, the court has carved out a unique jurisdiction for itself because the protocol that set it up and gave it the human rights mandate did not refer to any specific catalog of human rights that it can apply. Consequently, the court applies any human rights treaties and conventions that member states have subscribed to. Following this assertion, the court assumed jurisdiction to deal with the case and a reference, that is Amnesty International and seven others versus the Republic of Togo. The significance of this case is that it gave the court the chance to pronounce on and accept the locus standi status of both individuals and corporate entities to institute actions before the court for the violations of their rights and that of community citizens in the nature of actio popularis. Another significance is that the court clearly accepted and affirmed its jurisprudence that enabled corporate entities to sue for the violations of their fundamental rights. This way, corporate entities, rights to property, freedom of expression, and rights to fair hearing were upheld and enhanced. Finally, the decision has also enhanced the court's jurisprudence to the effect that the court recognizes that the right to internet access is closely linked to the right to freedom of expression. This is because the right to access to internet is a derivative right and an integral part of the human rights that requires protection of the law. The impact of the ruling is that member states have learned lessons out of it and have desisted from shutting down internet access to their citizens since then. I must, however, say that Nigeria recently blocked access to Twitter, but when the matter came before this court. The court issued a mandatory injunction and issued an order ordering it to restore the, the service immediately, which it did comply with. And therefore, I know that the decision actually has impacted both government and citizenry. There are certain few cases that the court has dealt with in terms of freedom of speech and other human rights, in particularly against the Republic of Gambia, where Journalists were indiscriminately arrested and imprisoned, and some even killed. The court made orders that the country should investigate the matters and prosecute the perpetrators of those heinous crimes. The court also ordered the countries to amend their laws, said that they will give freedom of expression to journalists. And therefore, in other cases of censorship by governments trying to take over whatever information need to be given by the media houses, the court has had the occasion to whittle them down and said that those ones are against the, the law and therefore the, the courts are right. Thank you very much for this success and for this award. Thank you. Recipients of this year's prize, Flip and Sahil, came together to protect human rights for citizens of Colombia and, more broadly, Latin America. Flip the Foundation for Press Freedom was founded 25 years ago in the context of the violent armed conflict in Colombia, which took the lives of hundreds of journalists and stifled the production of local information. Led by journalists, lawyers, and activists, FLIP established the first institutional mechanism for the protection of journalists in Latin America. Not only did the organization develop a powerful media alliance to fight censorship, it has also supported dozens of journalists who have experienced deadly threats or have been victims of serious acts of violence, displacement, judicial harassment, stigmatization, or state espionage. FLIP created a journalism laboratory to train local leaders in storytelling, working to decrease the number of information deserts that exist as a result of violence in the country. FLIP continues to take violations of freedom of expression in Colombia to national and international courts, and their bravery and tenacity serves as an important example for other defenders of this human right. Sahil, the Center for Justice and International Law, was founded in 1991 by a group of prominent human rights defenders from across the Americas, with the goal of giving regional organizations and human rights defenders the knowledge and technical capacity to make the most of advances emanating from the groundbreaking forum, the Inter-American Human Rights System. Recently, Sahil has sought justice for victims of modern-day slavery, 
garnered reparations and burials for victims of forced disappearance in Colombia and Peru, and strengthen democracy in Guatemala by protecting judges facing corruption and impunity. Working at both the local and regional level in the Americas, Sahil continues to reduce inequality, discrimination, and end the cycle of violence by strengthening democracies, protecting human rights, and by promoting governmental adherence to universal human rights standards across the Americas. Dear friends, dear colleagues, I am honored to be back at Columbia University and to be presenting the Global Freedom of Expression Excellence in Legal Services Prize. It brings me great pleasure to see the prize return after a two year hiatus due to COVID. This year's winners are Foundation for Press Freedom, or FLIP, and the Center for Justice and International Law, or CEGIL. They are the recipient of the 2022 prize for their legal work in the case of Bedoya Lima versus Colombia. And with them, we are also honoring the perseverance of the organization and lawyers in the face of adversity. Gines Bedoya Lima is a Colombian journalist and a women's rights activist. On May 25, 2000, she was abducted at the gate of La Modela prison in Bogota. She was drugged, beaten, humiliated, and raped for hours. Why such gruesome abuses? For informing the public about paramilitary activities. Those responsible included men in uniform, but for over 20 years, no one was held accountable for those crimes. On this, Gines Bedoya Lima wrote, and I quote, to rewrite one's story when it is so painful feels like a kind of suicide. Psychologists would say that this is part of a grieving process, helping closing nefarious chapters in life. But we, the victims of sexual violence, are often told that but I think it would be more helpful to the goal of moving forward if receiving justice was part of the process. It is such justice that FLIP and Sejil have pursued relentlessly, not only for Genes Bedoyalima, but over the years for many others. Since 1999, FLIP has assisted more than 1,000 Colombian journalists at risk. Sejil has been bringing hundreds of cases before the Inter-American Court on behalf of tens of thousands of people. The result of their work on behalf of Gines Bedoya Lima is a landmark decision by the Inter-American Court. It enshrines the principle that states have an obligation to implement effective protection measures to protect journalists and particularly women journalists. It orders Colombia to create a fund to feed finance programs for the prevention, protection, and assistance of women journalists who have been the victims of gender-based violence. And it demands the establishment of a memorial center about issues concerning violence against women journalists. Gines Bedoya Lema waited for two decades for justice. That was needed for her to move forward from the tragedy of May 25, 2000. Flip and Sejil made that possible. They made justice possible. They made moving forward for the victims possible. Their tireless work will also ensure that other female journalists, not only in the Americas, but around the world, benefit from their work. They have contributed to setting a precedent for journalism globally, for the protection of women journalists globally. For these reasons, and many more, on behalf of my fellow jury members, 
It is my great pleasure and honor to present Flip and Sejil with the excellence in legal prices for 2022. Thank you. Primero que todo, quisiera agradecer al presidente de la Universidad de Columbia, el señor Lisi Bollinger, por el premio Excellence in Legal Services del Columbia Freedom of Expression Prize. Es un gusto compartir este reconocimiento con una organización tan dedicada y experimentada como CEGIL. Este es un reconocimiento al trabajo colaborativo y la defensa de la libertad de expresión. Desde hace una década, Segil y la FLIP unimos esfuerzos para encontrar justicia en un caso tan doloroso y emblemático como el de la periodista colombiana Ginette Bedoya Lima, quien hace 21 años sufrió crímenes atroces en su contra como represalia a sus investigaciones periodísticas. El caso de Ginette Bedoya es emblemático porque habla de violencia contra periodistas, específicamente violencia contra periodistas mujeres, y de cómo ésta es usada para silenciar sus investigaciones periodísticas. La decisión que tomó la Corte Interamericana de Derechos Humanos sienta pautas fundamentales para los estados sobre cómo proteger a las mujeres periodistas, pero también sobre cómo crear espacios seguros para las periodistas, cómo combatir la impunidad y, sobre todo, cómo reparar a las víctimas. Esta es una de las principales motivaciones para hacer este trabajo, generar cambios para que se garantice el libre ejercicio de la prensa y para que los y las ciudadanas puedan acceder a información de calidad sobre lo que sucede en sus entornos. La FLIP decidió acompañar a Ginette hace más de una década. Y este caso dio apertura a que comenzáramos a litigar y acompañar legalmente a periodistas víctimas de distintas formas de violencia. Hoy llevamos decenas de casos en la justicia nacional y en el sistema interamericano y es una ventana que nos permite acompañar casos que de lo contrario estarían sentenciados a la impunidad. Estamos convencidos de que a través del litigio estratégico podremos encontrar justicia, no solo para las víctimas de los casos que representamos, sino también para los miles de periodistas que día a día salen a las calles a investigar. En esta lucha hemos tenido el acompañamiento de muchas organizaciones y personas que creen y han creído en esta causa y que han aportado con su tiempo, conocimiento y recursos, de tal manera que hemos fortalecido ese trabajo en red y de manera colaborativa, para que hoy podamos decir que se ha avanzado en justicia. Good morning and good afternoon. It is an honor to be here to accept the Global Freedom of Expression Prize for Excellence in Legal Services from Columbia University on behalf of the Center for Justice and International Law, CEGIL, alongside our partners at the Foundation for Press Freedom in Colombia, FLIP. We are deeply grateful to Columbia University for recognizing our work and our strategic collaboration in the case of Jeanette Bedoya for more than a decade. On May 25th of 2000, Ms. Bedoya was kidnapped, raped, and tortured in retaliation for her journalistic work after multiple uninvestigated threats. However, she was not silenced. Ms. Bedoya became one of the most vibrant voices for accountability for gender-based violence in her country and worldwide. For the last two decades, she has sought justice for herself and for thousands of victims of sexual violence during the Colombian armed conflict She has done so in the midst of constant threats to herself and in a context of impunity for victims of sexual violence and impunity on press freedom attacks in the country. Over a decade ago, we joined FLIP in representing Ms. Vidoja because we believe that her case could shed light on the ways women are sidelined from public debate through sexual torture, harassment, and impunity. We also believe that this case could bring about vital structural changes. Our close alliance with FLIP and Ms. Bedoya shows how strategic litigation and strong partnerships can trigger deeper transformations, both at the national and international level. We have seen time and time again that social change must be a collaborative effort. When seeking justice for atrocious crimes, there are very few moments of joy. Receiving this award today 
from one of the most prestigious universities in the world is one of those moments. It fills us with joy and strength to continue doing the work that we do, defending rights to change realities. Sehil and uh, Flip want to humbly share this recognition with Ms. Bedoya, who is a force of life, a role model, and a phenomenal journalist. We want to acknowledge as well the unwavering support of friends and allies in numerous organizations over the years. Finally, I want to extend a special thanks to all journalists that carry out their work in adverse circumstances. Thank you for your courage and bravery. Your work inspires us every day. Thank you. And now to conclude the 2022 ceremony, please welcome back Catalina Botero Marino. Thank you to all those who participated in this year's ceremony. Throughout the nominations review process, the selection committee had the great opportunity to learn about outstanding cases in which uh, the judicial branches, lawyers, journalists, and activists showed a significant commitment to the protection of freedom of expression. We would like to close our ceremony by acknowledging some of the exceptional nominations that we received, such as the case of Director of Public Prosecutions versus Siegel from the Supreme Court of the United Kingdom, the case of Pando de Mercado versus Gente Grossa from the Supreme Court of Argentina, or the case of the Human Rights Network Uganda versus Attorney General of the Constitutional Court of Uganda. And we also would like to recognize the extraordinary work done by organizations who with tremendous courage and resilience have defended freedom of expression in very difficult context such as the Hungarian Civil Liberties Union, the Coalition Against Slabs in Europe, the Center for International Law in Philippines, the International Association of Jewish Lawyers and Jurists, Article 19 in Mexico, Abrayi in Brazil, Thai Lawyers for Human Rights, or the Argentinian Center of Studies for Freedom of Expression and Access to Information. These nominations and the others we received demonstrate some of the impressive ways that judges and civil society organizations are at the forefront of the global fight to defend freedom of expression for all of us. They deserve our immense gratitude. Congratulations once again to our winners and to all our viewers. Thank you for tuning into this year's ceremony.